Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today I would like to talk about bootstrapping method, how it is working. Uh, there is one package which is doing that, bootstrap it is called, and you can find useful functions. But today I would like uh, to, oh, no. today I would like to show you how the method is working. So even without the package, uh, everyone can do it. This is a validation method with random resampling. First, I open a data table, which I will do uh, multivariate regression together. The Y column contains the dependent variable, depending ones, and axes from one to 34 are the independent I use for prediction. The data table I call D. I usually use short names for that. And I will make an R script to save what we have done. Okay. So, and we have multivariate regression and we first load data. I will perform the analysis to show how is it working and after that we will do the validation with this so-called resampling. I will need one more package, the PLS package, which is containing the multivariate regression modeling. So this is, I will need for MVR function. Okay, so prepare data. The Y parameter is already there, so this is what I will predict. And unfortunately, this package uh, needs a matrix as an input. So within the D, data frame, data table, I will make a matrix, data matrix, DMX, S matrix. From the data table, all the rows, but columns from the third one to the last. This is the third one, and the last one will be 36. So from three to 36, and I drop the structure, I need only the numbers in the matrix. So now I have the data matrix inside D, I can use it. And now I can run the multivariate regression. Model number one will be multivariate regression, Y predicted with the data matrix. The number of the components you can see, we can decide here, let it be 10 at the beginning, we will see what we will use finally and data of D will be used. So this is model number one. First question, how many components, components we need? The root mean square error of prediction will show us how the prediction error decreasing with increasing number of the components. Maybe if I plot in chart, it is more visible, easier to choose. You can see that after a sharp decrease, it doesn't change much, however, I decrease uh, the number of the components, so maybe I will choose five. After five, I cannot see big change, so number five will be the number of the components I will use. So, the prediction will work with the predict function, so predicted values will be calculated as predict model number one, components from first to fifth, the first five I will use. And now you can see that I have the predicted values here. So this way I can uh, plot the data table Y values against the predicted ones with blue color. And the X level will be observed and the y level, y axis level will be predicted, the multivariate regression predicted. Now you can see that uh, they are aligned uh, along the diagonal, uh, which is the best for us because uh, if uh, I can imagine the diagonal line, it means that all the x and y values are the same. Now it is ranges around from zero to 400, let's say. So I will add the red line from 0 to 400 and the diagonal line 0 to 400 with red color. 
and you can see that indeed this diagonal line is going through the data uh, point so it looks uh, a successful uh, fitting the quality parameters I should calculate for example uh, the R squared value determination coefficient the data table y value against the predicted on the squared you can see this is the R squared value and the root mean square error we can also calculate as square root of the mean values of the differences uh, the data table y values against the predicted on the squared. So now you can see that uh, exactly we calculated the same. Now it is rounded here, 20.24. We calculated the same, but more digits are visible. So this is how the quality parameters can be calculated and we can make a prediction with multivariate regression. Now comes the bootstrapping. The bootstrapping is a validation. We should uh, learn how robust our method is, how it will behave probably with new data which were not included in the calibration set. So uh, now it is coming to boot strapping. This is a method based on random resampling. So the number of the runs we have to decide how many times we want to do the random resampling. Uh, it is typically a large number. Right now I will choose 500, so I will repeat it 500 times. You can do it thousands times, millions of times. It's up to you how much time you have and uh, how strong your computer is. The number of the selection, it is an important question. Uh, typically, it is recommended to have 80% of the data for calibration, 20% for validation. Now we have 201 uh, observations, so basically 20% uh, will be 40 pieces of samples. So this is what we uh, will select. And uh, because we run it many times, I need containers to save the results for each run, the R squared value, determination coefficient, and the root mean square error. So the model R squared will be uh, zero values at the beginning with number of the run. The number of the run and number of the selection I will need later. Uh, and uh, the model root mean square error also number of the run so I have both so now I have the containers for 500 times I can calculate the result and save it there The fourth cycle I will use because I want to repeat it 500 times. An index number will be used from one to number of the runs. Oh, sorry, capital R I will use. And then I have to do what I did before, but separately for training and validation set. So I will separately, uh, I will separate the data table to calibration and validation. So the row selection will be sample from 1 to 201. This, this is the number of the rows I have totally. You can see here. And I need number of the selection rows. And after that, I need uh, a data table for calibration. It will be the original but only the row selection, all the columns. And then data for prediction from the original data table without the selected rows, all the columns. So now I separate it to uh, calibration and prediction validation set. So calibration and prediction or validation. Unfortunately, sometimes people call it prediction, sometimes validation. 
uh, but now we will use it for validation. Okay, run analysis. So the second model will be created as a multivariate regression model. The y values will be predicted using the data matrix with the number of five components because earlier I decided that five is enough, no need to calculate more. And the data will be the data for calibration. This is what I will use. But the predicted values will be calculated using the predict function from model number two, components from first to fifth, and the new data will be the data used for prediction. Oh, no, the, uh, yes, data for prediction. Uh, sorry, I mixed it, unfortunately. So the calibration uh, will be without the selected because we selected 20% of the data. And the prediction validation will be the selected 20%. Okay, so now it will work that way. So I use the predict function, model number two will be run with five components together on the prediction validation data set. Okay, and now I can calculate uh, all the parameters. Uh, model root mean square L, uh, R squared value. First is index I, will be correlation of what? Now we be very careful. The validation, the prediction we will use, y against the calculated predicted values on the squared. Model root mean square error, root mean square error, also index element will be the square root mean value like before, the difference on the squared, but what is the difference? Again, the prediction data set y against the calculated prediction, and now I have it. So if I didn't make any mistake, and everything is here, number of the run, the containers are ready, so I can select and run it 500 times. Oh, it is running. It seems there is no syntax error. And it already calculated, so 500 was not a big challenge for the computer. And now I have all the calculated coefficients based on random selections for each time. What we can do? Uh, we should summarize it. So basically, the names of the parameters what we have calculated are the R uh, squared value and the root mean square error uh, of the prediction. The mean values we can calculate from the 500 times uh, running. So the mean value will be the mean of the containers, the model root mean square, uh, uh, R squared value, and the mean for the model root mean square error. Sorry, they are very similar. <laughs> I made a mistake. And now comes a tricky question. How to get, for example, a confidence interval? In what range? Uh, they could be because of the random selection, there is some uncertainty. And in the help, there is a test called t-test we can use for it because on one set, one data uh, set, one array, it will calculate also the confidence interval. Of course, it has two numbers, the lower and higher values. So the confidence interval, 95% is the default value. We can change if we want, but I will leave it as default. So 95% minimum will be, first, I calculate the t-test on the r-squared values, and then we'll use the confidence interval and the first value. Then I copy this to apply on the other parameter, root mean square error as well. And then I will have the same for the maximum. It will be the second number. 
and now it is finished. I can make a summary table from them as a data frame, data frame, and I list names, the mean values, 95% confidence interval minimum, 95% confidence interval maximum. So, okay, if I run it, I didn't make any mistake by typing it, and then I have uh, the table here. So you can see how it looks like. The R squared value is here. What is the average of the 500 repetitions? And what is the confidence interval for that? Also the root mean square error, you can see. And it is already the validated value, not uh, for the prediction using all the data. Only of always 80% of data we use for calibration and uh, 20% for validation. So this is already the result of validation. If you want, you can uh, plot histogram of it, or you can decorate uh, this plot with uh, the numbers. It's up to you. But now you can see how basically the bootstrapping is working. We just selected the number of the runs. You can uh, change this parameter here. The number of the selected rows is here. I will add comment number of row selection. Our selection was 20% for validation. This how comes the 40 pieces. And then the R squared value, root mean square error containers we filled with zero. We ran the analysis. Be very careful. We randomly split the data to calibration and validation tables, and we make the model on the calibration and do the prediction on the validation set, and we calculate the uh, quality parameters on the validation, the so-called prediction set. Okay, so this is how the bootstrapping is working. Hope you will find it uh, useful and you can do it. Have fun with our